In today's video, we will be talking about the genomic analysis of COVID-19 as of April 3rd, 2020. For the full situation report and other COVID-19 resources, please visit our website at nextstrain.org. In this week's updates, we have analyzed over 2,500 publicly shared HCoV-19 genomes. By comparing these viral genomes to each other, we can characterize how COVID-19 is moving around the world and spreading locally. In this report, we will focus on these regions, Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America. We do want to note that we have received new viral genomes from South America and Oceania. Most of these new samples are scattered across the tree and group of samples collected in other regions of the world. Without more contextual data, however, we aren't yet able to draw inferences about these new sequences. We currently have sequences from samples taken in 53 countries across six continents. While this data enables us to infer many useful characteristics of the outbreak and track its spread in real time, it's important to emphasize that our conclusions are limited by the available data. For example, the map shows very few sequences from the global south. This is not because COVID-19 isn't circulating in these areas or that these cases are not as crucial to understand. Rather, we just don't have much data available from these areas. Remember that the size of each circle on the map indicates how much data is currently available from that area, rather than the true size of the outbreak. Today, for Africa, we have updates for Senegal and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. When looking at the tree, we see two clusters of cases from Senegal. These clusters do not group together, which indicates that they were the result of at least two separate introductions. Each of these clusters consists of closely related cases sampled across a short period of time, consistent with local transmission. The cluster shown towards the top of the tree consists of cases sampled in the car between February 28th and March 4th. In the middle of the tree is a cluster of cases sampled in Tauba between March 10th and March 12th. This suggests that HCoV-19 may have been circulating in Tauba for around three weeks. From Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we received eight new genomes this week. All but one of the new samples cluster within the local outbreak clades, which we reported on last week. This demonstrates that there is ongoing local transmission within the DRC and swift action must be taken to contain the outbreak. In updates for Asia, the recent introductions to Japan are cruise ship associated. Of the 16 recent sequences added from Japan, 10 have travel history on board on a Nile River cruise. After being diagnosed and sampled in Japan, all 16 sequences divide between two clusters. Interestingly, these clusters do not link with other Japanese or Asian sequences, but fall within clusters that are primarily found in the US and Europe. It seems likely that these Japanese travelers were infected by strains they encountered from other Europeans and Americans visiting Egypt. As sequences were sampled in mid-March, after the travelers returned to Japan, this is evidence that variants that were primarily circulating in Europe and the US were being exported around the world in early March via global travel. For Europe, we have updates for Iceland and Austria. We recently received 301 sequences from 25% of the confirmed cases from Iceland. Coloring each sample by its recorded travel history, we see that approximately half of these infections were acquired outside of Iceland, while half are presumed locally acquired infections. As we reported last week, this highlights just how much mixing there is between outbreaks in each European country. For any given sample, we can draw inferences about where its predecessors must have been but we can't rule out the possibility of indirect transmission by way of an unsampled location. This is a powerful example of how comprehensive sequencing efforts and travel logging by one country can help us understand the local situation elsewhere, even for places that aren't yet generating sequencing data. When looking at the cases sequenced in Iceland after reported travel to Austria, we see multiple clusters of closely related Austrian cases, sequenced over a short time period. This is most consistent with a scenario wherein there are multiple introductions into Austria. We can't be sure if the link sequences represent community transmission in Austria or travel partners linking together after exposure to the same strain. Though shown in gray, the number of connections between different European countries is notable. 
Most European countries seem to have multiple introductions, so there is no simple story for how the virus has spread through Europe. For North America, we have updates for the U.S. and Canada. As we gain a fuller picture of the outbreak in the U.S., it's clear that these localized outbreaks are the result of extensive mixing. While many of the early cases were travel-associated, the more recent cases from many different states are largely intermingled with each other across the street. This emphasizes that a unified strategy will be crucial to stopping this outbreak. Looking at Canada, we see two clusters of sequences from Ontario. These clusters do not group together, and each cluster nests alongside samples from other countries, indicating that these were the results of two separate introductions. Within each cluster, however, each of these cases is most closely related to other cases from Ontario, indicating that this is most likely local community transmission. We infer that there has likely been community transmission in Ontario since at least the 3rd of March. Interestingly, most of the surrounding sequences, which are the faded tips, are from the U.S., suggesting that there has been significant mixing between the two countries. Overall, here are some takeaways from this report. We find evidence for local transmission within Senegal in the DRC. Swift action must be taken to contain the outbreak in these vulnerable areas. We do not yet have enough data to assess the situation in other parts of Africa. The recent introductions to Japan are associated with cruise ship travel. The extensive sequencing by Iceland highlights the extent of travel-associated spread and reveal likely local transmission in Austria. The cases across the U.S. commingle on the tree, demonstrating extensive spread across state lines. There is also evidence of mixing across the U.S.-Canadian border and local transmission within Ontario. Here are some steps you can take. Practice strict social distancing and reduce the number of people you are in contact with, even if you're not vulnerable. Practice social distancing to protect others. Many people around you are vulnerable, such as seniors and those with pre-existing conditions. Wash your hands like you just chopped a jalapeno and have to change a contact lens. Remember to stay home as much as possible, especially if you're sick. Be prepared with a few extra supplies in case you need to self-quarantine. And if you're an employer, encourage your employees to stay home when they're sick and financially support them to do so. Here are some other steps your officials can take. Some examples are to make testing free and broadly available, to put strong social distancing measures in place, to fund and implement extensive contact tracing and isolation efforts, and lastly, to financially support those impacted by social distancing measures. We would like to acknowledge the amazing and timely work done by all scientists involved in this outbreak. We'll report weekly updates on the Next Strain website.